This podcast contains adult content. Welcome to the James Chambers Show. I'm your host for this podcast, James Chambers. It has been another wild week. Donald Trump junked a bipartisan immigration deal and sent the government into a fun little shutdown. Republicans blame Democrats, who blame Trump, who blamed everyone but himself, even though he actually caused this mess by rescinding DACA last year. (laughs) Sorry, I got out of myself. So 48 hours later, the government reopened and with a commitment that the CHIP program, which is the Child Health Insurance Program, would be fully funded for six years. Yay! And then Dems would pass a clean CR with no DACA, Boo! for three weeks, which essentially would allow the government to stay open for three weeks, all with the promise that Mitch McConnell and the GOP would have a vote on comprehensive immigration reform by February 8th. If no deal passes, then McConnell committed to a vote on DACA, which is the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. At least, I think that's what he agreed. He can be kind of slippery. Okay, first, trusting Mitch McConnell is a big mistake. He is a shrewd political tactician. What he agreed to was nebulous and only predicated upon the idea that the Senate would come up with an immigration reform by February 8th and that the Democrats would take another shutdown off of the table. And at this point, the shutdown is the only thing left for the Dems to do. They have no more leverage after folding on the last standoff. We're holding a position with very little bargaining power already, but fine, we may may have a possible compromise in the coming weeks. I will withhold judgment until February. The complexities of budget negotiations aside, let's look at one of the small little sections of the debate, DACA. President Trump rescinded DACA back in September through an executive order. There was no need to do so, but because he promoted himself as the anti-immigrant candidate, canceling DACA was essentially low-hanging fruit. Fun fact, DACA is supported by nearly 90% of Americans. And this is not a political issue for the country. It's just a bargaining chip for the political class. If you don't understand DACA, just keep listening. Trump claimed he wants a new, bigger, better DACA deal, one that was full of love, he said. I guess because no one loves the dreamers like he does. Months went by, no deal. Dems were promised that this would be handled prior to budget negotiations. It wasn't. A bipartisan deal was proposed, and Trump scuttled it after claiming publicly that he would sign any bipartisan deal put before him. Now that Steve Bannon is gone, I bet that weasel-faced white nationalist Stephen Miller worm-tongued his way into Trump's head before the meeting. Some of you might need a refresher on DACA, or, or maybe you don't know anything about it. No problem. I, your friendly host, will give you a quick primer. DACA stands for Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. Former President Obama enacted DACA in 2012, essentially protecting a certain class of immigrant from deportation. Uh, Side note, if you want to learn about DACA and the Dreamers and how that'll happen in detail, Google search the Dream Act of 2001. Basically, if you were brought to the U.S. illegally as a child, you would not be deported. I mean, pretty simple, right? Imagine your parents brought you to the U.S. at, say, four years old. This country is the only country you have ever known. You are, for all intents and purposes, American. DACA acknowledges that and allows recipients to work and to go to school, to drive legally, to have bank accounts and pay taxes, actually. DACA does not make them citizens, nor can they draw from any social welfare programs. When you look at the facts, DACA recipients actually don't need public assistance. Far from it. These folks are a major boon to our economy. More than 90% of work-eligible DACA recipients are gainfully employed, 93% if you look at them at the age of 25 or older. And the numbers go up after that to 97% if you include people who are actually going to school and or working. How do we know this? Well, polling for just for one. And also, to stay in the U.S., there is a system of applications and fees that are assessed every two years. The government has records of everyone enrolled in DACA and their current status. Despite all the evidence and basic morality, Trump pulled the plug on DACA four months ago and nearly 800,000 people have been thrown into chaos and uncertainty because of him. Some will argue that DACA recipients are taking away jobs from real Americans. Well, actually, they're contributing over $500 billion in tax revenue over the next 10 years. 
doesn't half a trillion dollars mean that consumption will grow and more jobs will be created? So again, basically, DACA has no downside. Let's dig into the meat of this just a little. You have probably heard the argument that DACA is just amnesty for illegals, and we shouldn't allow illegals to benefit from our hardworking American tax dollars. They're criminals and rapists and murderers, and what about MS-13? And if you support amnesty, then you're against real Americans and the rule of law. <sighs> First, DACA is not amnesty. Amnesty means a full pardon for criminal action. Fun fact, illegal immigration is not a criminal violation. It's civil. There is a big difference. Well, in any way, okay, let's just say that DACA, let's air quotes this, is amnesty. So what? Is that such a bad thing? These people were kids under 16 when they were brought to this country through no fault of their own. They have been participating in our schools, in our jobs, our homes, our friendships and families for a decade now. They're laborers and educators and firemen and women and police officers, and they serve in the military. They're probably better Americans than most Americans you know. Second, they benefit our country in a myriad of ways. To pull the carpet out from under them with a simple swipe of a pen just to score a political point, I mean, it's just disgusting. More than that, it's a gross violation of our own supposed cultural ethic. Trump violated a promise we made to nearly one million people in this country. We made a promise to these children that you will be safe here. We will not deport you, and we will help you acclimate to American life. In turn, they have worked, they have learned, they have committed, and they have most importantly stayed here in the U.S., providing us with a new pool of talent and labor and intellect and culture. Again, DACA doesn't have a downside when you look at the facts, not the hyperpartisan spin machine. If you hear politicians or pundits or your Fox News watching uncle conflating DACA with immigration, stop. Just stop. Listen and understand. They have a clear ulterior motive. DACA is a specific program that protects around 800,000 people living in the U.S. right now. Immigration overall is not the same thing. There is a debate that can and probably should happen about our legal immigration system. But that will take time, and it should take time. It should also be deeply bipartisan. And if anything has proven the first year of the Trump presidency, the Republicans are not interested in anything bipartisan. They own the House, they have a majority in the Senate, and they have an ideologically malleable narcissistic sponge living in the White House. I mean, why compromise? Let's swing back to the budget negotiation. Mitch McConnell promised that if the Democrats pass a temporary budget funding the government until February 8th, immigration reform would be addressed, immigration reform, in three weeks, immigration will get worked out in three weeks. Huh. And supposedly, if immigration fails, then a DACA bill will be voted on, or at least something will be advanced on the floor. He, he wasn't really clear. Didn't we just do all this? Well, let's see if Mitch keeps his word this time, but I wouldn't hold your breath. Something else happened this week that didn't get a whole lot of coverage, but it, it bears discussion. Brandon Griesemer, and I'm probably butchering his name, a 22-year-old Michigan man was arrested over a week ago for making threats to CNN employees. During a call to CNN headquarters in Atlanta, Griesemer said, Fake news. I'm coming to gun you all down. The call included racial slurs, as you can expect. Another call he made, I'm on my way right now to gun the fucking CNN cast down. I'm coming to kill you. He made 22 calls over two days. If you have been watching over the last two years, you've probably noticed an uptick in the violence being done to journalists. Certainly, you've noticed the rabid anti-journalist sentiment hovering like a cloud over the nation. One example that springs to mind is uh, Congressman Greg Gianforte's notorious body slam of a journalist for just asking questions. In 2017 alone, here in the U.S., 34 journalists were arrested. There were 15 stops for search and seizure of equipment, not all of which was returned, five border stops, and 44 physical attacks, including pepper spray, knives, blunt objects, and fists. Who has been stoking the flames of disregard for truth and clarity for the last two years? 
who has been casually dismissing norms and logic and evidence and saying that anyone who disagrees with him is fake news. Hmm? Anyone you know? The fake media is trying to silence us, but we will not let them. These people back here, they're the worst. They are so dishonest. No, no, they're so dishonest. You, I think you've set a, a new bar today for being contentious with the press corps, kind of calling us losers to our faces and all that. Absolute scum. Remember that. Scum. Scum. They're totally dishonest people. Dishonest. Dishonest. Fake scum. It's dishonest people. Oh, I don't know what I said. Ah, oh, I don't remember. Their agenda is not your agenda. You've been saying it. Isn't it amazing how, you know, they don't even want to look at you, folks. They consider you deplorable and irredeemable also. By the way, the world's most dishonest people are back there. Look at all the cameras going. Look at all those cameras. Unbelievable. They are dishonest. And a big part of the rigging are these dishonest people in the media. I find the press to be extremely dishonest. I find the political press to be unbelievably dishonest. I will say that. Absolute scum. Remember that. Scum. Scum. These people are the worst. He calls journalists and the media writ large scum and evil and dishonest and working against you. And we can assume you means the journalists are them and they are not like us. We are real Americans. They are part of the liberal establishment that doesn't exist and they want to keep us all down. This was a pillar of the Trump strategy then and now, a relentless attack on the free press. From the beginning, President Trump has been denigrating, disparaging, name-calling, and more troublingly, undermining the public's trust in the institution of the free press as a source of journalistic integrity. Trump often invokes the dishonest media and fake news, but he has gone further during his political career. During campaign rallies, he would call out journalists by name as he did with Katie Turr from NBC, calling her Little Katie Turr and implying that she was corrupt and dishonest, personally. At least he didn't say she had blood coming out of her wherever. So there's that. But in that incident, Turr had to be escorted out by security for fear that someone would attack her. Well, someone did threaten to attack journalists. Threats to CNN's Atlanta headquarters might just be remembered as the first spark landing in a tinderbox. No, violence did not happen this time. But we know how these things go. We know how these things escalate. How many people are hearing Sean Hannity and Alex Jones spin conspiracies and hate and then Breitbart and Reddit and 4chan turn the hate up to 11 with no regard for the consequences? Our founding fathers knew what a free press meant. They knew how important a free press is to democracy and civil society. Journalism and the free press is one of the bedrocks of America's lasting legacy to the world. But the hordes are at the gate. Stoked by the hate flames of their great leader, they will crack the foundations of our civil democracy to rubble while wearing the false flag of their patriotism on full display for the entire world to see. Let's hope there will be enough of our founder's legacy to recover. Last on the show today is something of a throwback to a simpler time, a time of Zeke Havaricis and hairspray and pegged pant legs and skaters and grunge music. I speak to you, of course, of the 1990s, specifically the pop Swedish band Ace of Bass. Oh, you know this. Isn't You remember, just let that synth pastiche wash over your senses. Isn't that lovely? It's simple and fun and elegant and Nazis. What? Yep, sorry to bust your groove. One of the founders of Ace of Base has ties to the neo-Nazi movement. So once again, fuck you Nazis for screwing up something else. I mean, damn it, they just keep popping up, don't they? Ulf Ekberg is one of the founding members of Ace of Base. Back in Sweden, Ulf was also a part of a band called Commit Suicide in the early 80s, which included little gems like Don't Touch Our Land and White Power Blackhead Slaughter. Or this lovely little bit of poetic prose, Men in White Hoods March Down the Road. We enjoy ourselves when we're sawing off N-word heads. Immigrant, we hate you. Out, 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 out. 
Nordic man, wake up. Shoot, 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 shoot. God damn it, Ulf. Thanks for fucking up my childhood. But that was all in Ulf's past, right? He later denied that that wasn't him, but only to say that he was not the same man and he didn't want to talk about it. Could it be some of his tendencies wound up in his later projects? Once we uncovered the ace of base neo-Nazi connection, the intrepid reporters at the James Chambers show buckled down and reached out to all of our high-level contacts in the recording industry and production, anywhere we might be able to dig up some dirt on the ace of base Nazi conspiracy. Because I'm going to look low, and then I'm going to look high! Oh, and did we ever dig up some dirt? Now, you can dabble around the fringes of a Nazi connection if you want. Like, for example, the song All That She Wants, the character sleeps in, it's not a day for work, she lays around, then goes to the beach without a care in the world, but she wants another baby. A literal baby? Are they implying that she is mooching off the system just to have babies to make wo more welfare money? Or Oh, and it gets worse. In another scene in the music video, a woman, who appears to be in a baby's room, looks at a bracelet comprised of six-pointed stars. Layabout? Six-pointed stars? You draw the connection. Or did Ulf make it already? <laughs> but those, those are just trinkets. The crack team at the James Chamber show found the real gems. We obtained never-before-heard, never-released raw recordings of several Ace of Bass songs with the original lyrics still intact. No one has ever heard these, but we're going to share them with you. You may be alarmed. Nazi. Nazi. She's gone tomorrow, boy. All that she wants is another and low song. Yeah. All that she wants is another browse bad. She's gone tomorrow, boy. All that she wants is another knack and nebble. Yeah. Es der Führer. Ooh, whoa. Oh, enough of that. So, there it is. Now you know the truth. And now you know the secret Ace of Base agenda. To take over the pop culture airwaves and infect Nazi propaganda into the unsuspecting minds of teenagers lulled into complacency by the relaxed synth grooves of Top 40. Or, or whatever. Maybe not. Anyway, we at the James Chambers Show feel strongly that Nazis are bad. We want to make sure that you are safe and secure if ever confronting a Nazi in the wild. Please, take a moment and listen to this special announcement. It might save your life. Remember, Nazis are bad. Okay. Like, really bad. Like worse than if you slipped in the shower and landed face down in the toilet bowl. Worse than if your pediatrician was Larry Nasser. If you see a Nazi, don't get close to it. It may be dangerous. Don't ever feed a Nazi. If you feed a Nazi, 
they might stop being afraid of humans. If a Nazi tries to talk to you, recite this simple phrase. La 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 fuck you. La 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 go away Nazi. This has been a public service announcement from the James Chambers show reminding you. Go away. Nazis. Fuck you. Thank you for listening to the Daka 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 episode of the James Chambers show. We would love your comments, so please leave your notes in the comments section down below. Or you can email the show, realjcshow2017 at gmail.com. Or follow us on Twitter, at realjcshow, and Instagram, realjcshow. Thank you so much for listening. Catch you next time on The James Chambers Show. These people are the worst. Fuck you, shithead.